이야기 TV 시청자 여러분 안녕하십니까? 지금 제 옆에는 요 진신 씨가 함께하고 계십니다. 얼굴을 보시면 이 사람이 누군지 잘 모르실 수도 있겠는데요. 이분의 작품은 어쩌면 한 번쯤은 보셨을 수도 있겠습니다. 특히 이번에 63번가와 렉싱턴 에비뉴가 만나는 FQ 지하철 라인에 이분의 작품이 새롭게 전시가 됐습니다. 이분 함께 이야기 나눠보도록 하겠습니다. 진신 씨 안녕하세요. 네, 오늘 통영 말씀에는 웨인 씨가 함께 합니다. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. 네, 일단 이 지하철에 세워진 작품 이름이 참 궁금합니다. 이 지하철에 있기는 한데, 이름이 세워지지 않아서 궁금했거든요. 이름 좀 알려주시죠. Uh, can you tell us about your recent work and what's the name of it? Sure. Um, the work is called Elevated. And I wanted to uh, let people think about the elevated trains that existed on the 2nd and 3rd Avenue. Uh, they were destroyed in the 40s and 50s. And when that happened, people in New York thought, we were definitely going to get the 2nd Avenue subway station because they took away the elevated train. Mm -hmm. And of course, it didn't happen. And these are centuries of, um, of history similar to this, where people were waiting for the 2nd Avenue to mm -hmm. happen, and it didn't. Um, so I wanted people, when they come to this new subway train, to realize this is not a new idea. This is an old idea that New Yorkers have been waiting for for mm. almost a whole century. A hundred years of passing and wanting and waiting for this train. So when they come to the 63rd Street Station, which was the first commission of the Second Avenue, I wanted them to understand this history, that they see all this construction in ceramics and red. And you see that New York is always a place of construction, always trying to change and become with the times, and that it happened with the elevated, but also happened with the Second Avenue subway and will continue to happen with the new infrastructure. And then as you descend down, the um, New Yorkers today and visitors will be going underground mm -hmm. in this new track. And back in the day, you would ride above ground. Um, when the train left, people were um, saying, oh, this is my last train on the elevated. And they have memories riding this train. And when they ride this train, they see this incredible view of the city, which we no longer mm. have. So in the platform on the train, I wanted to give them that view of the city again. And these are all photographs that I found in the Transit Museum's archive and the New York Historical. And they're beautiful photographs, small, insignificant, taken by workers documenting the process. And in them, I saw people, New Yorkers, uh, just commuting going to work. And so I pulled them out of history and created them mm -hmm. in life-size mosaic so that that present New Yorkers who commute today can be with the former New Yorkers that were in these photographs. Um, and they can see this view of the city that we no longer have. Um, similarly, when the train were dismantled, the people on the street said, oh my god, I've never seen the sky look so beautiful mm -hmm. because they're no longer living under the shadow mm -hmm. of the elevated track. So the city was alive and vibrant because they got the New York sky. And so again, as people go underground, they no longer are commuting with, like, as if they're flying in the uh, sky, in the clouds. So I've created this be beautiful blue mosaic that mm. is reminiscent of giving the New Yorkers their sky underground. 네. 저도 이거를 봤는데요. 이 작품이 정말 말씀해 주신 대로 타일로 이렇게 모자이크가 되어 있어서 굉장히 작품 크기도 크고요. 좀 압도적인 크기에 좀 이렇게 위압당할 정도의 그런 규모입니다. 저뿐만이 아니라 많은 미국 시민들이 지나다니면서 아 이게 누굴까? 이건 누굴까? 이러면서 굉장히 좀 흥미를 갖는 모습을 봤는데요. 그 중에서 좀 눈길을 끄는 것이 1층 플랫폼에 있는 남자가 도널드 트럼프가 아니냐. 또그 엘스, 에스컬레이터로 내려가는 이 길에 있는 영웅맨이 있습니다. 이 젊은이가 존 에프 케네디니 아니냐를 두고 논란이 자기들끼리 막 하는 모습을 보았거든요. 이 부분 좀 여쭤볼게요. 의도를 하신 부분인지 아니면 우연의 일치인지 좀 궁금합니다. A lot of people saw or heard about your recent work. They were wondering there was a man standing in your picture and they're wondering he's a Trump, Donald Trump. And there is a, another young guy standing in the picture. People wondering he's a John F. Kennedy. So can you tell us about it? Um, well, that's amazing because these, these people who I saw in the photograph struck out to me as these vibrant people in history. And I was curious, who are they? And they're strangers 
you know. They're everyday people who just went to work. But actually, I'm an everyday person who goes to work, and I just happen to have done this incredible project. So I am very optimistic about who these people are, you know. And yes, maybe they are <laughs> JFK uh, or the next president, you know. Um, so, so to me, or an artist, you know, the, all those questions are incredible, but they are strangers. They just happen to be in this picture. But I hope that they will be claimed by someone who goes, that's my grandfather, or that was me mm -hmm. when I was you know, 14. Um, because these uh, people were selected because they had a sense of spirit um, that uh, penetrated in the photographs and that I wanted to bring to life. 네, 말씀해 주신 대로 성별이라든지 나이에 상관없이 정말 많은 사람들이 벽화에 그려져 있어서 더 많은 관심을 끌고 있는데요. 정말 오랜 시간이 이 프로젝트에 들어갔을 거라는 생각이 듭니다. 이 작품 만드시는데 얼마나 걸리셨나요? How long did the recent project took period wise? And the first phase was me thinking of the idea and what I wanted to do for this project. And I was very interested in the site. I make site-specific installations. I do a lot of research. And for me, what was interesting and the most significant was that the New York was going to get their second avenue subway. But this was not a new story. <laughs> this is an old story that every single time, every single decade, they say this. It's almost a joke. Mm -hmm. No, they're not. You know, so many generations have been disappointed that they were not able to ride the Second Avenue subway. And especially when they took away the elevated trains, they thought it surely it is going to happen now because they took away that train and we're going to get that Second Avenue subway. So this idea turned into my fascination for the elevated mm -hmm. and capturing um, these beautiful images that I have been privileged to research. And I wanted to share that with the public. Um, so it's been a long process. I translated these construction um, images, collaged, and then I had a ceramic fabricator mm. um, translate every single piece, every beam, every crane into new ceramic work mm. that's permanent. So the entrance, you come in and you see this grand city under construction. Um, then I worked with another fabricator who does mosaics and he translated the sky, this beautiful silhouette, a ghostly memory of New York as you go underground and the bringing the people alive that I found in the photographs. So that was another long process, um, selecting and making them. Um, then the, on the platform, I worked with a glass fabricator who um, translated these photographs of the city at the view of the elevated train. So they're beautiful silhouettes um, of the city skyline, and that is in full-size glass up on the platform. And you mm -hmm. see the train coming in and the mirrored reflection of yourself, um, one with that view. So it took a long process. Um, then we finally installed it, and to anticipate the final opening um, of the subway was really, mm -hmm. really grand. 정말 듣기만 해도 저는 <웃음> 상상조차 할수 없을 만큼 정말 많은 시간과 많은 노력을 들이신 작품이라는 생각이 드는데요. 근데 또이 작품이 지하철에 걸리기까지 좀 많은 과정이 있었다고 들었습니다. 선택이 되는 과정에 대해서도 좀 얘기해 주시면 좋겠어요. So um, when you joining for this project, I heard uh, that was really competitive process, right? So can you tell us about how long or how was the selection process? Um, well, the selection process was fierce and it's very, very intense. I was competing against famous, famous artists in art history, contemporary art, mm -hmm. and as you can tell from the other selection where they cho chose Chuck Close, Vic Muniz, Sarah Z, these are people who have been in world museums in the Venice Biennale and Jean Shen. So mm -hmm. I feel very honored to be in the same company mm -hmm. as these people, but I am the youngest artist and mm -hmm. um, certainly underrepresented by their fame and celebrity. Um, I have been known for doing these large-scale public projects working with museums like the Museum of Modern Art, the Smithsonian, public institutions. So um, I am known for this work and I am privileged that they selected the work. 본인 스스로도 참 영광이라고 하셨는데 사실 한인으로서도 같은 한인 미술가가 이렇게 그 반열에 오르셨다는 것도 정말 자랑스러운 일 중에 하나입니다. 그러면 이제 이 작품이 아니라 이 진신 씨의 개인적인 얘기를 좀 여쭤볼게요. 이 미술가가 된다는 게 사실은 쉬운 일이 아니었을 텐데 미술가가 되고 싶었던 동기라든지 또 힘든 점이 있으셨다면 어떤 게 있으실까요? We're gonna start to ask you about your private question, actually. <웃음> And, uh, when did you start to dreaming to be an artist? 
I always wanted to be an artist. Um, so even when I was in Korea, I left when I was six. I always drew, I always wanted to be an artist. Um, thankfully, when I moved to America, I had many opportunities to pursue mm -hmm. um, and get awards and acknowledgement for being a young artist. 그렇다면 좀 가장 힘드셨던 점을 어떻게 극복을 하셨는지도 좀 궁금합니다. Was there when you were dreaming as an artist, did you have any hard time or is there any way to Yes, I think being an artist is tough. I think society thinks of artists as being outsiders and in fact it's the opposite. Um, we are so integrated in society, um, but that, that validation is hard, right? But I don't seek validation from people. I am focused on what I want to do and how I want to change mm -hmm. the world in the way that I think um, makes the world better, right? So in that way, it's hard to convince others, especially my parents, you know, whose uh, focus was to make sure that I was doing well in the future, just as any Korean person would be. So I think one of my earliest struggles was to convince my own parents, you know. Meanwhile, I had foundations and schools give me scholarships and first pr place prizes, and yet they were not convinced to let their daughter be an artist, right? So to, con to convince your own is hard, right? But I had o always had my own conviction that despite support, I would do it. Um, what was so lucky for me was that I did get early support from these institutions, from other people who really believed in me. Um, so my dreams came true in that way. But I think being an artist and choosing that life is always difficult um, because people don't know what artists do. 정말 그 말씀해 주신 것처럼 똑같은 이런 고민들과 똑같은 어려움을 지금 미술을 공부하고 계시는 학생들과 또그 부모님들이 겪고 계시지 않을까 싶은데요. 특히 또 한인 미술가들, 이 미국에서 정착하고 있는 한인 미술가들을 위해서 한마디 해 주신다면 선배로서 조언을 해 주시는 어떤 게 있을까요? As you are a famous artist, can you uh, say something to young Korean American artists? Well, I would say to stick to your dreams and think about what it is that you want to do in this world and, and do not let that dream go. Because I think that is the most important thing is that art transforms people's lives and you have to start from yourself. And you have to start from convincing not only yourself but the people around you how important art is. It creates meaning and significance in people's lives. And then when you get an opportunity to be an artist, right, what kind of work you do and what kind of artist you are is an example to live by, right? And I always think that you can make art that transforms the world, that actually can change the world to a, vi a vision of, your, of a better place. And so um, it really starts from first, I would ask the world to support artists so that they can um, allow that to happen, you know? But for artists to really continue to follow up your dreams every day, despite the hard work. 오늘 이렇게 개인적인 얘기부터 작품 얘기까지 진신 씨와 함께 나눠봤습니다. 오늘 말씀 정말 감사드리고요. 앞으로도 많은 작품 활동으로 저희 한인들과 또 뉴욕커들, 또 뉴저지에 사는 시민들에게 좀 희망을 주는 그런 미술가가 되시기를 기원드리겠습니다. 오늘 말씀 감사합니다. 네.